We have a simple cornhole game design, a little bit of plywood, a CNC machine and everything else we might need to make a cornhole game with custom corn bags made from old pairs of jeans. Since we had the design ready, all we had to do was load a sheet of plywood on our CNC router and do some cutting. As always, to ensure precise cuts, we followed simple order of the operations. First, we cleaned out the mortise pockets. Then we cut a hole for the corn bags to go in. Only after all the joint cuts and the inside contour cuts were done, we continued with the component outlines. This simple order of the CNC operations will ensure the best quality parts. After removing the first sheet from the CNC's work surface, I loaded another sheet and ran the same program again. Now we had the game fields and the leg components, and we only needed the frame parts to complete the project. To make them, I slid the last sheet on the CNC and let the machine do its thing. By now you might be wondering what these pockets and all the small parts are meant for. Well, since the winter is coming, I thought it would be a cool idea to make a smaller tabletop game field that could be played indoors. And I had a little bit of room left on the sheets, so I thought, why not test it out while we are building the big one. Anyway, it didn't take long for the CNC to cut all the parts, and now we were ready to trim the edges of each part. The small parts were easy to work on, however, the game fields were more challenging. Trimming the edges with the trim router probably would have been easier to do. However, I had only two larger parts, so I didn't want to go through the hassle of removing the small router from our CNC machine. After the edges were rounded nicely, I had to send the parts to prepare them for finishing. So I gave a couple of passes on each part with the orbital sander. I think I had 100 grit sandpaper on. So the surfaces should be smooth enough for the liqueur. And component after component, I sanded the larger surfaces. When that was done, I had to work on the plywood edges. It required sanding by hand. It gave me enough time to realize that I probably won't be able to purchase the corn bags for the small tabletop game and I will need to make them myself. But before we take up that challenge, I first had to glue the small field parts together. As the first step, I wanted to glue the side components in place, so I added the glue on the back of the game field, spread it around and installed one of the sides. Then I did the same to the other side component. Next I added glue for the back panel and attached the part. The fit was tight and the part needed some convincing to get into place. As the last step, I glued the front component in place. The joints weren't as perfect as I would have liked them to be. There was this small gap between the mortise bottom and the tenon, but it wasn't that bad. Anyway, I had to do the same steps again for the second game field. After half an hour of the glue setting, I gave the small game a couple of passes with the roundover bit and the orbital sander. And finally, the project was ready for finishing. Since all I had for this task was simple paint roller, I started by applying the liqueur to the component sides and then to one of the surfaces. It allowed me to place the finished parts on the paint drying rack. So I warmed up with the leg components and then applied the finish to the frame parts. The challenging part was getting the hinge joint finished. The roller was too big for this task, but once the joint was done, the rest of the part was easy. And one by one, I finished the frame parts as well. Then I could work on the large panels. The first two edges were simple to work on, but the large size of the panel made it challenging to finish the remaining two. So I had to rest the just finished edges on plywood strips, which wasn't perfect. However, when the edges were done, the tabletop surface wasn't difficult to work on. And soon I was done with the game fields as well and could work on the tabletop game. I figured the best way to finish the game was by starting with the outside of the box. So I first worked on the sides and then on the game field. The small size of the project made it easy to hold in one hand while finishing. And soon after the first half of the tabletop cornhole was done, I finished the second one as well. By this time the parts we had worked on first were dry enough for us to finish the other side as well. So I quickly applied the finish to the leg parts, the frame components and the game fields. Then came the challenging part, finishing the insides of the tabletop game. The roller made it challenging to finish the inside edges and the corners, but after a little bit of struggle I managed to apply the lacquer to the box inside as well. And now it was time to work on the corn bags. I thought it would be cool to make the corn bags out of an old pair of jeans and use plastic pellets for the filament. This was my first time working with the sewing machine, so I thought this would be a great experience. I had no clue what I was doing, but this is what I did. 
I cut the jeans into smaller pieces of fabric that were approximate size for the corn bags. Then I did a contour pass on each cloth piece. I was told this would prevent the fabric from fraying. After that was done, I could fold the fabric in half and do the pass on each side, creating this small pocket. When the pocket threads were in place, I turned the pockets inside out. And I was ready to weigh the plastic pellets and pour them into the pockets I just made. After the pellets were inserted, I could close the pockets, creating the cornhole bags. It was exactly that simple. Well, not really. Anyway, in the end, I managed to complete the corn bags and went to assemble the large game fields. This shouldn't take long, considering each game field consists only of four components, but getting to assembling did take some time. First, I had to test our tabletop game, and oh boy, it was fun. So after an hour of trying out different drawing techniques, I managed to assemble the large cornhole game, put it in the car, and drive to the park to test it out. To my surprise, it was super fun. I love the fact that the game requires not only luck, but a little bit of skill and coordination. And considering how simple it was to build one, I have to say, it was totally worth it. If you want to make one for yourself, you will get the CNC files for this project on our website. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.